A very good evening to you wherever you are across the world and welcome to the Zones coverage of this El Clasico. Barcelona versus Real Madrid in Liga FA. It is a fixture that resonates right throughout the world. Started once upon a time in 1902 when these two sides fought as Real Madrid, which they only became known as in 1920, known as Madrid CF back then, lost 3-1 to Barcelona. Of course, in the women's editions of El Clasico, that's very much more a recent thing, the first in October 2020. But it is Barcelona who dominate in this sphere with 10 wins from 10, looking to make it 11 from 11 today. Confirmation of your fixture here at Estadio Johan Cruyff, sold out, of course. It is El Clasico. Barcelona looking to go 13 points clear at the top of Liga FA and keep their record-breaking run going by making it 59 straight league wins as they stay on course for a second consecutive perfect season. How Real Madrid would love to disrupt that by, for the first time ever, avoiding defeat against the Blaugrana, who have 10 wins from 10, 36 goals scored, just six conceded. Fantastic atmosphere in here, predictably so. Tickets extremely hard to get hold of for this one. And quite a few very disappointed that we're not at the camp now, where, of course, Barcelona will be in midweek for their Champions League quarter-final second leg against Roma, but not today. It is, of course, almost a year ago to the day that 91,553 watched as Barcelona beat Real Madrid 5-3 in that Champions League quarter-final second leg. The game that changed football. Four changes for Barcelona from that midweek 1-0 win at Roma when Salma Parirello's goal was the difference. Ana Maria Suna, Gorcevic, Ingrid Engen, Marta Torrejon and Jace come in. Azizat Oshuala drops out up front. Carolina Graham Hansen, Kira Walsh and Irene Paredes also all drop out of the 11. Rivera Olmedo has the unenviable task, the somewhat thankless task of refereeing here in El Clasico. Not an easy job at all. We'll start with the pre-match formalities. Between the two skippers, we find that Andres of Real Madrid on the right. And on the left, Marta Torrejon. Real Madrid have also made their four changes similarly to Barcelona from their last outing, but it was a far more disappointing one for Los Blancos, that late goal from the veteran Maria Jose Perez, causing them a surprise 1-0 home loss against Granadilla Tenerife. Kenti Robles, Mate Orof, Kapelin Souza and Esther Gonfalev are the four to come in. Olga Carmona, Claudio Florentino, Atenea del Castillo and Nahikari Garcia are the four to make way. That also means that Sophie's father can move out to a more natural left-back position in Catalan coming back into the team. A swap of ends to start things off. Kick off mere moments away. Aitana Bonmati, one player plenty will have their eyes on. She's been in some sizzling form recently. Ten assists and nine goals in her 14 matches across this calendar year. Even by her high standards, some set of form that. Real Madrid, of course, in all white, Barcelona in their traditional Blaugrana colours. No, doubtless you likely knew that already. Another chapter in this famous rivalry set to be written then. Can Barcelona make it 11 from 11 in women's El Clasicos? Or can Real Madrid finally disrupt that? Real attacking from like left to right as we look at things in this first half. Barcelona from right to left. And you might notice a change on the front of the Barcelona shirts. Logo of Motomami, the latest album by Catalan singer Rosalia, which was the most played Spanish artist during last year on Spotify and the most played female artist in the city of Barcelona. So something of a celebration of Catalan culture on the front of Barcelona shirts. And of course, it is a divide, Barcelona and Real Madrid, that goes so far beyond football into politics and culture, of course. And no shortage of drama going on off the field when it comes to Spanish football. That's not exactly a secret. 
and it very much remains to be seen what Spain's World Cup squad will look like for this summer and who will be in it. Ingrid Engen get back in midfield in place of Kira Walsh and look to dictate the play from there for Barcelona. Off and underway then in the 11th Women's El Clasico. Historically dominated by Barcelona so far. Real Madrid desperate to change that narrative. 10 wins from 10 for the Blaugrana against the Madridistas. And another win today would take them 13 clear at the top of Liga F as they hunt for yet another title. Here come Real Madrid early on though, Gonfalef. Round the corner, but the pass wasn't quite where Maite Orof wanted it. Orof, who is certainly no stranger to a Clasico, has played in all 11 El Clasicos by virtue of being in the starting lineup today. Barcelona are without quite a few players who've been particularly prominent for them in previous editions, though. Alexia Puteas, the top scorer in this fixture with eight goals still out. Barcelona also without the likes of Claudia Pina and Mariona Caldente. Lika Martins, the second top scorer in this fixture with four goals, of course, now of Paris Saint-Germain. Aitana. Rolfa. What well, was left for the run of Jace? He eventually put enough pressure on Catalan to force the throw. Jonathan Giraud is in charge of Barcelona, has been since the summer of 2021, has a perfect league record with 52 wins from 52 under his tenure. No team's ever scored more than a goal against them right throughout that run. Looking to keep that record going today. Alberto Toril desperate to stop it. Torillo took charge in November 2021, replacing David Anza. Last season, Real Madrid finished third, 30 points behind Barcelona. They've been tracking well to at least finish second this time around, and if nothing else, managed to close the gap. But this season's gap has somewhat widened in recent times after that goalless draw with Atletico Madrid and then defeat to Granadilla Tenerife. Free kick for the foul on Patry. Rolfer in space. Just a bit too much on it. Does manage to at least keep Real Madrid penned in. Be a fascinating tactical battle to watch today. Fridolino Rolfer and Lucy Bron certainly needing no second invite to get forward for Barcelona down the flanks. Was taking a look at the average position map and passing matrix from the Roma game and it effectively maps out as more of almost a 2-4-3-1 with Paredes and Leon at the back that day and then Kira Walsh's average position behind Rolfer and Brons who are pushing on and then Bonmati in behind Oshwala with Graham Hansen down the right and Pariuelo down the left and whilst there's been various personnel changes today we'd still expect that Brons and Rolfer bombing down the flanks will remain consistent. Set crossfield for Rolfer, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. They'll look to hug the touchlines, those two, and always give Barcelona a wide outlet. Set crossfield, but Svava can't bring it under control. Something of an unenforced error from the Danish left back. He's, I mentioned Rolfer and Bronze liking to get forward. Svava's played in far more advanced positions often for the national team. Chase wins the throw. That is another subplot to keep an eye out for. A hot debate from Barcelona fans at the moment about who should be starting up front in their big game, Chase or Azizat Oshwala. Chase getting the nod today. Oshwala has more often got the chance throughout this season. Nigerian is on the bench if required. Lovely ball between the lines. And Aitana feeds it out wide. 
every little touch being applauded. You can feel the atmosphere here. There's something different about an El Clasico. Sona Gorcevic just forced back. Barcelona looking to pick the lock through the patient passing they're so well known for. Aitana. Mapi Leon. Mapi Leon's cross it was a dangerous one. It's still in there for Aitana. Brilliantly blocked. Danger still not gone though. Caicedo. And then Svava puts boot to ball and just gets it away. Play on, says the referee, to the home fans' frustrations. Now a chance for Real Madrid to have their first attack of significance. We are cut out by Rolfer, and it needed to be. Well, we're already seeing a pretty high tempo start. Both sides responding to the atmosphere created here. Well, this is Mappy Leon's cross. That is one thing to keep an eye out on for. Mappy Leon, a centre back nominally, but in many ways her attacking presence was all over the midweek game against Roma, was third for chances created, had the most passes completed, the third most passes in the final third, and the second most crosses as well of anyone on the pitch. Very much does end up making Barcelona tick when they're trying to break down low blocks, Mappy Leon. Has the luxury to step out from the back, knowing that does tend to have a cover centre-half alongside her. Caicedo worked inside. Little interception gets it to Jais. Jais with the chance to run. Instead, sets it back. And then recycled by Patrick after the good carry forward by Salma Pariuelo. You can see that positional flexibility again. Chase now drifting out to the left wing. Pariuelo through the centre, but Chase also drifting offside. Chase signed in the summer from Madrid CFF, who in another universe could have become Real Madrid. Real Madrid taking over. CD Tacon, but uh, for a long time there was rumours it would be Madrid CFF that they would take over. Madrid CFF even for a period of time from 2010 to 2014 playing in all white and being known to encourage such a prospect. Here's Aitana. Still Aitana. Good tackle from Kenty Robles. It's got to be a good tackle at the moment to stop Aitana Bonmati. Bonmati in some form right now you imagine any team in the world would love to have her Esther Pariuelo I mentioned that takeover of course Real Madrid only ending up being formed in the summer of 2020 after a transition season it was in the summer of 2020 where they fully absorbed CD Tacon and became Real Madrid come a long way in a short space of time but have the unenviable task of trying to topple one of the world's very best here in something of a golden era at Barcelona of course Barcelona looking to make it into a fourth Champions League final in five remember that you can watch their second leg as you can all of the UEFA Women's Champions League games this season live free and exclusively on the DAZN Women's Football YouTube channel and on the DAZN app Well defended by Svava, Aitana's header. This is already the third time these sides have met this season. In the reverse fixture in the league, Barcelona winning 4-0 away in November. Goals from Sona Gorcevic, Guijaro, an own goal and Rolfa sealing the deal. Second time they've beaten 
them by that scoreline in the league. It's, it's a bit too much on that ball through. Misa has just a second to... Well, it's going to say try and bring calm to things. Not going to happen with this atmosphere. Even by doing that, and just taking a few seconds, the boos and whistles come. Misa sends it forward. Misa, much like Maite Orof, playing in her 11th El Clasico, has played in all 11. Doesn't necessarily always have happy memories. Got an own goal, scored an own goal in the first one and got a red card in the second. And they've never kept a clean sheet against Barcelona Real Madrid. The closest they came was conceding just one in the Supercopa semi-final last season. Slid through towards Jace, who leaves it for Pariuelo. Pariuelo. Teenage trickster trying to work her way through, but well stopped. And then helped through. Patrick. Patrick's cross. Svava's header. Caicedo working it back for Svava. Svava looks long. Relatively new signing for Real Madrid, Linda Caicedo. Who scored a key goal to get them into the Copa de la Reina semi-finals. Winning after extra time against Villarreal. Caicedo scored in the 100th minute of the game. And that proved to be enough. The semi-finals in the week of May the 24th. Real Madrid could have a game against their cross-city rivals Atleti or might also be against Athletic Club or struggling Alhama. Really good chance for Real Madrid to get a bit of silverware there and certainly helped that possibility, you'd say, by Barcelona being excluded for fielding an ineligible player during their quarter-final tie. Down the line by Svava and Esther will get onto it. Wins the throw, that's really good work from Esther Gonfalev. It's exactly what they need from her, given Barcelona's dominance of possession in these opening exchanges. Key threat as well, 22 goals across all competitions. 16 in the league. And those 16 in the league coming from just 11.4 expected goals. So that tells you just how lethal Esther has been. It's been her and Caroline Weir who've been so crucial to Real Madrid's attack this season. Sent forward towards Robles. Nicely worked. Orof. Worked out in the end for Orof. The pass wasn't meant to hit to Letty, of course. Sandy to Letty, who will have a big role in this game, trying to sit at the bottom of the Real Madrid midfield and soak up pressure and then, where possible, operate in more of a box-to-box -box fashion. Mappy Leon. Rolfa. Under pressure from Orof. Marta. Back to Panos. He was excellent during Roma's late midweek flurry. Sandra Panos had to be at her very best. Particularly notable save from Valentina Giacinti to ensure that they got a clean sheet to take back to the camp now for the second leg. Of course, all four quarterfinals finishing 1 0. Robles was looking for Esther, but Rolfo was there to clean up. And a slightly dicey pass out the back. Engen just had to get it anywhere. Inviting pressure onto themselves here, and then Engen makes up for the mistake magnificently. Really good work from Ingrid Engen. Had to be at her very best there. Engen, who signed from Wolfsburg in 2021. 
has been excellent this season and often has been keeping Kira Walsh, the world's most expensive footballer, on the bench. Intense competition for places in that midfield region for Barcelona. This was the recovery from an initial pass, which he was forced into by Panos's decision. Weir. Free kick given for the foul on Aitana. Foul from Orof. Well intercepted, but it comes straight back to Rolfa. You can find Marta. Marta Torrejon, Aitana. Helped around the corner by Suno Gorcevic. Bronze. For the first time in this game with space in an attacking position. Patry. Eventually sets it wide for Mappy Leon. Mappy Leon's cross. Svava is there. Good defensive covering from Sophie Svava, who's been busy in the early part of this game. Caicedo trying to set Real Madrid going forward. Gets the throw eventually, Linda Caicedo. One to keep an arm, picked on the goal next gen list of players to particularly look out for in the future. She was linked with plenty of the biggest game clubs in the women's game as she approached her 18th birthday. Real Madrid securing that valuable signature though. Made a debut for the Colombian national team at just 14. Linda Caicedo. Goal kick, one off Chase. Caicedo, who was player of the tournament at the Copper America last year. A pace and finishing have already been shown to be a lot of use to Real Madrid, who for now are having to absorb quite a bit of pressure, as they might have expected to. We're dropping beeps. We're. What a signing she's been since swapping Manchester for Madrid. Madrid's second high scorer and assists are plenty as well. And creativity are plenty too in the midfield. Barcelona looking to box Real Madrid in. Back with Mappy Leon. Rolfa. Really good tackle in there on Parriuelo, and now it's Real Madrid's chance to counter. We are holding off Engen. Esther. Wasn't the best pass. Kaffelin did well to get there ahead of Jace. And again, it's all somewhat frantic. Caicedo running back to get there. Shoulder to shoulder against Aitana. Still Aitana. Aitana's cross. It's out with for now. It was Bronze trying to create something. You can't take your eyes off this game for a moment. You can see the passion and the frustration there for Aitana Bonmati. Just couldn't quite keep it in play. Bon Mati, someone who will know all too well everything that this fixture means, having come through the ranks here. As Pariuelo was just about to shoot, and what a tackle that is. Scored from a pretty similar position against Roma in midweek. Needed to be stopped there by Real Madrid and was just in the nick of time. Pariuelo got her first Champions League goal in that game at the Stadio Olimpico that had almost 40,000 at it, a record Italian women's football attendance. Sandy Toletti on Parayuelo. My, my, that is a tackle. Superb from Toletti. One of a number of players Real Madrid have recruited from Levante in recent times. A 
having begun her professional career at Montpellier and then built her name in Spain with Levante. Longtime French international too. Here's Rolfa. Sets it wide. Jace. Who again is offside, having drifted into that left wing channel. You can see what the Brazilian thinks of it. Of course, no video assistant referee in Liga FA. Though there has been for the UEFA Women's Champions League quarter finals. Thrown one by Rolfer. Fridolina Rolfer is such a threat down that left flank. Ten assists already this season for Barcelona, level with Patrick Ijaro on that tally. Only Aitana Bonmati has more. Bonmati with exactly 16 goals and 16 assists each, which reflects what kind of an outstanding campaign she's having. Both managers in deep thought on the touchline. Jonathan Giraud is keen to keep that long winning run going. Stands at 57 straight league wins. If you look at just the home record, it is 58 straight home wins in Liga FA since February 2019. They can make it 59 with victory today. And that 57 record home and away is the current record for a women's professional team. Leon considered by the record books second with 46 from December 2011 through to January 2014. Engen just trying to work their way through. Jace hustled out of it. Comes back for Patry who finds Rolfer. Still Rolfer. Rolfer's cross gathered by Misa. Just ran out of room playing touchline tango there, Fridolina Rolfer. Mentioned the Swedes' brilliant assist record this season. Just trying to add yet another to it. Talked very eloquently for Delina Rolf on the Dare Pitch podcast about adjusting from very different tactical setups at Wolfsburg, a previous club, and now at Barcelona in terms of what's expected from her and playing in different roles right up and down that left flank. As well as also speaking about the importance of International Women's Day, which was earlier this month. Barcelona creating a new colour, Lila Barca in purple as part of that. Beautifully worked move, bronze with the cross that was cut out in the nick of time. And for all Barcelona's pressure, Misa Rodriguez has not had to make a particularly exceptional save in this first quarter. Mapi Leon decided to let fly, can produce the spectacular. And decided that she wanted to Try luck, Mappy Leon. He does already have a goal in El Clasico. Scored in the 5-2 win in the second leg of the Champions League quarterfinals last season. There's a his own documentary coming very soon on that. The game that changed football. Well worth a watch. Of course, Mappy Leon, Maitana Bonmati, Claudia Pina, Alexia Puteas, and Carolina Graham Hansen on target that night for Barcelona. Olga Carmona and Claudio Zornofa scoring in defeat for Real Madrid. But it was a night that was about so much more than the game itself, of course. Although the game itself was a belter too. Este Confalef wins the throw. Encouraging early signs here for Real Madrid, who are holding their own in the contest. You know, there was quite a few in Blaugrana colours who were somewhat disappointed with that midweek performance against Roma. Roma creating a lot of decent chances and not making life easy for Barcelona. Ariuelo back for Rolfa. Now Marta has bronze on the wide option and uses her. Lucy Bronze, who's been going by uh, 
uh, quote unquote new name of Lucia Roberta at Barcelona, referring to Roberta being one of her middle names as well as Tough being the other one. Here's Aitana. Again, a good tackle from Slava, who's got through a lot of defensive work down the Real Madrid left in the early part of this game. Sophie Svava, who's been at Real Madrid just over a year since joining from Full Sport. Marta's cross, looking for Rolfa. Really important little touch in there. Real Madrid having to be really alert in defence here. Mappy Leon comes across to take the set piece. No shortage of support for her as she does. Worked short. Mappy Leon's cross. And then Orov just has to smash it away for another corner. Desperate defence needed from Real Madrid here. Maite Orov providing it there. Orov, who recently passed 100 appearances for Real Madrid. Her and Misa, the first players to do so. Salma Pariuelo to take the set piece. Pariuelo's cross. It's a floater that's. Headed away initially by Kafalen. Pariuela with the fancy footwork. Drives it in. It's a real game of penalty box pinballs. Jace recycles. Pariuela once more. Mappy Leon. Leon's ball in. Comes for Marta. He didn't quite strike it cleanly. What a moment that would have been for the Barcelona captain. He's never scored in an El Clasico, very much not a primary job, of course, but the defender was up from the set piece. It fell kindly to swing a boot at. Worth putting in context as well. Real Madrid have travelled a, a long way in a short period of time. This is only their third season. Finishing second and reaching the Copa del Arena quarterfinals in their first. And then finishing third, reaching the semi-finals of the Copa del Arena and the quarters of the Champions League last season. This season, something of a disappointment in Europe, going out in the group stage. In a tough group that did also contain Paris Saint-Germain and Chelsea. And losing out to PSG away from home on match day six. Now busy contending with the high press from Barcelona. Misa looks towards Robles. Thrown conceded by Mappy Leon. Mappy Leon, who turned down art school for football once upon a time. Before that, had been spotted by a scout playing football in a supermarket by a child as a coach. It's come a long way since then, as has the women's game, of course. Academies popping up all across Spain now to discover the best young talents, and these two clubs investing plenty in that regard, as you'd expect. Caicedo. Real Madrid unable to work their way out of that high press. Pariuelo almost got there against Robles, who ends up losing it against Patri. Pariuelo inside, Aitana. Decides to pass instead of shoot. And then cleared by Robles, Svava was there. All a bit frantic at the back from Real Madrid. Patry, Marta, wide for bronze.
Marta has to recover and hasn't. And suddenly a chance for Real Madrid is where sprints clear. Weir's cross, wins the corner off bronze. Beautiful work from Caroline Weir. Counter-pressing magnificently and winning the set piece as well. After very much getting the better of Marta Torrijon. Weir has been such a brilliant signing for Real Madrid this season. Set the atmosphere, everything around games. It's something I've never really experienced before. The fans over here are so passionate and noisy. Certainly two objectives to describe the Blaugrana supporters today. The Blaugrana supporters, Weir, is determined to help silence from this set piece. And a goal might be the only way of doing it. Weir to take the corner. Weir's ball in, headed away by Marta. And then a foul on Jace. Chase getting her chance to start up front today. It has been Ziza Oshwala that's been preferred in that central striking position for most of this season. And it's Rolfa. Linking up beautifully with Patry, who's into the box and the wrong side of Toletti, who recovered just in the nick of time as Patrick Ihara was looking across the box at their options. Andy Toletti eventually was there. That was Weir's corner. Headed away by Marta Torrejon. Salma Parihuelo to take the out swinger. Bus stop routine ready. Five there on the penalty spot. Parihuelo headed goalwards, but it's a simple save for Misa Rodriguez. Denying Ana Maria Sonogorcevic what would, be, what would have been her second goal in El Clasico, having scored in the reverse fixture back in November. Of course, Real Madrid also, for a second straight season, won in the Supercopa semi-finals. It wasn't easy for them, though, winning 3-1 after extra time. Caroline Weir scoring the equaliser after Claudia Pina had the Blaugrana in front. Goals in extra time from Mariona Caldente and Salma Parayuelo eventually making a difference. And Real Madrid were down to 10 from the hour mark when Irene Paredes was sent off for a second bookable offence. Which you'd probably say is close as they've come to getting a result in this fixture historically, Real Madrid. Although in the Supercopa the year before, it did take a equaliser in the 91st minute, the first minute of stoppage time from Alexia Puteas to make the difference, as Jace has managed to get the run on Cafalen. It's still Jace, looks across, just about scrambled clear, Engen in there trying to win it back. And then Orof ran into trouble, Patrick. Little ball round the corner from Jace wasn't quite where it needed to be for bronze. Now Weir looks up and only has Esther ahead of her. Barcelona trying to keep their remarkable run going. Could be a 59th straight home league win. Across more than four years since February 2019, when Nazizat Oshua, the double wasn't enough, and a 3 2 defeat to Sporting Deco Elva. Only Marta Torrejon left in the starting lineup today from those who played in the starting 11 that day. Rob this. Svava, looking for Esther, Bronze has to be wary. Well won by Caicedo, who only ends up putting it out for a goal kick. Linda Caicedo, one to keep an eye on, 
one of three players across these two clubs who was named on the list of 25 players to watch by goal recently, Julio Bartel and Vicky Lopez. Lopez, who is in the matchday squad today for Barcelona, two of the others. Plenty of young talent coming through for both of these sides. Sofia Fuente, who's Real Madrid's backup keeper today, winning the Golden Glove as part of the Under-17 Women's World Cup winners last October. And, of course, the Spanish Under-20s winning their Women's World Cup too. The seniors all to come this summer. Rolfa. Clever little bit of triangulation now. Engen finds Aitana. Sona Gorcevic chopping inside. Sona Gorcevic's ball back was stopped by Toletti. Nisa, good composure to find Svava. Svava looks forward. We're just trying to flick it on. We'll get it back. We are. We are to shoot. And Panos has to be alert. Albeit it is a save that you would expect a keeper of Sandra Panos's quality to make. Now Barcelona's turn to come forward. Aitana. Engen. Seen out for a goal kick. You can hear what the home fans think of that. Well, that was the save from Panos. Esther. Caicedo. Well, one back. Now Panos to clear. Gathered by Panos. Attack breaks down from Real Madrid. Patrick. Mappy Leon just directing traffic ahead of her. Now Patrick. Just like to drop out into that inside left channel and try and feed Rolfo with balls like that. Patrick Iharo has 10 assists for Barcelona this season. Only Aitana Bonmati has more. And one off Rolfa. Barcelona looking to continue their run in this fixture. Sides meeting six times, no less, last season, twice in the league, as Caicedo is offside. Twice in the quarterfinals, once in the Copa del Arena semi finals. Once in the Super Copa as well, certainly getting to know each other very quickly. A moment of calm as Bronze gets ready to take the throw. Weir, sprinting clear, 
Kane, not with too many options up ahead of her. Real Madrid normally naturally like to get those fullbacks far more further forward than we've seen in this game. Predictably, having to play somewhat differently because of who they're up against. Now Svava can, for once, get into a more advanced position. Caicedo. Little slip ball in behind. Mappy Leon had to be alert. Positive signs for Real Madrid. Helped on by Zornolfa, who eventually is hustled out of it. Well, one back. Chase linking the play to Engen, who had a pocket picked. Nicely carried by Weir, who was frustrated to not get the return pass. These two, of course, with very different histories in women's football. Barcelona first getting going way back when. Officially incorporated under Barcelona's wing in 2002, the women's team, but have been going for a long, old time before that. Real Madrid, of course, only formed in 2020. Svava. Still Svava. Comes off Sona Gorcevic. Not the best clearance from Bronze. Marta was there. Caicedo. Nicely worked to Svava. This is just what Real Madrid need. Spell in possession in a half where they haven't had a huge amount of the ball at times. The longer this stays at 0 0, the longer their belief will grow. Ball forward looking for Esther. There was Panos. Stegon Farlev just trying to get him behind. Add to her growing tally this season. Let's play on, says the referee. You can hear what the home fans think. Pariuelo. They won't mind the advantage if they score from it. Sona Gorcevic. Back for Pariuelo. Now Aitana with the little chip. Bronze. And now we will come back. Aitana Bonmati making it very clear what she wants to happen. And it will now be a yellow card. Claudio Zonofa goes in the book. Zonofa, who is one of only four Real Madrid players to have ever scored in an El Clasico. Olga Carmona scoring three times, including in both the quarterfinals last season. Kosovo Aslani, who is now at AC Milan. Caroline Weir and Zonofa, the other three. That was the challenge from Zonofa, somewhat late and clumsy. And unsurprisingly, like a lot of things, doesn't get better when viewed in slow motion, which brings one towards the various debates around the use of the video assistant referee, which, of course, was extensively seen in the Champions League quarterfinals and provoked extensive debate across the four ties that all finished 1 0, tantalizingly poised and set up for next week. Jonathan Giraud is trying to get his side into another Champions League final. Of course, winners in 2021. Atana Bonmati, player of the match. Losing in last season's showpiece against Lyon and also losing out in 2020. It's easy to forget Barcelona have only really been a big force in the women's game in the last decade or so until 2011. Winning the Copa della Reina in 1994 was the only competition they'd ever won. But since then, it's been a very different story as we're back underway. 19 major trophies, seven league titles, eight Queen's Cups, the Copa de la Reina, that Champions League win, and three Super Coppers as well in a period of unprecedented success. Barcelona hoping to make the Champions League semi-finals, which are on the last two weekends of April, the final in Eindhoven on the 3rd of June. 
Esther finds Caicedo, who is offside. Lucy Bronze back on as we approach half time. That replay very much supporting the decision given. Remember, you can get involved on social media, the league's official account at Liga F underscore official, at the zone football for all things the zone, at FCB Femini, and at Real Madrid Femme for everything across the Blaugrana and the Madridistas, respectively. This is Esther, might fancy a shot. She did, and it drifted wide. And of course, only one hashtag predominantly in use for this game. Hashtag El Clasico. If you wish to get in touch with me, your commentator, Michael McCann, always nice to hear where you're watching from and what your thoughts have been on this first period. Do send me a tweet on at this is McCann. This is McCann, M -C -C -A -N -N. And be sure to be following the DAZN UWCL and DAZN football accounts. Here's Rolfa. Now Patry. Mappy Leon. Deflects Kiney into the gloves of Misa. And that will be that for the first half of El Clasico. Real Madrid, no doubt, the more content. They've had to absorb a lot of pressure from Jonathan Giraldez's side. But that being said, Misa Rodriguez has not had to make too many particularly difficult saves. It is tantalizingly poised. Barcelona hunting a win to go 13 points clear at the top of Liga FA. I'm looking to make it 11 from 11 in El Clasico's and keep going that record-breaking run across women's and men's football with 57 straight league wins. But they've got work to do here against a Real Madrid side who, despite their recent indifferent form, are in no mood to make it simple for them. Barcelona have had more of the ball, haven't necessarily managed to probe and penetrate as much as they might like in that opening half. At the break, here at the Estadio Johan Cruyff, and it's Barcelona nil, Real Madrid nil. Tough times can even make you or break you. It was tough, but it made me. This was the moment that Anthony Joshua became a major star. I was just shouting at him, like, come on, let's fight, where are you running? Joshua's going for the finish. And this is the, uh, the passion of Dylan White. I thought there was going to be riots in the crowd, I really did. In the space of six years, he'd gone from being a raw novice to going in with one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. One shot away from, from trouble or disaster at any point. You have to dig deep, and they're the type of fights that people remember for many years to come. Canelo turning pro at the young age of 15. He was destined for great things. Oh! oh. It's, it's all over. It's over. He knocked him out cold. Oh, no. oh nice shot. My boy Canelo, pound for pound, best fighter in the Thank world. You. Thank you. Canelo is the beast. You can box at range, you can box up close. Right I honestly believe nobody can beat Canelo Alvarez. The very best action from around the globe. From free running to Formula One and everything in between. This is the place to see exceptional athletes doing extraordinary things. Whether it's near impossible challenges or life-changing journeys of discovery, these are the innovators pushing the limits of possibility. Incredible moments, unforgettable stories. Welcome to the new home of Action Sport. Gustav Eden from Norway, part of the Norwegian train, as the man who has not lost PTO race. The 27-year-old from Norway, Gustav Eden, will claim victory here. I'm different because I'm smarter than the rest.
Et bah avec d'autres dogs ça marche, mais à l'âme. <rire> Hot dogs for hands or burgers for feet. Are they uncooked or they cooked? Ah, je m'avais oublié que je ne pouvais pas faire. Igual, je ne nécessite pas de hot dogs en l'âme. I think feet. Yeah, because then you can use your hand and with a brush you can at least walk. <laughs> Si, lo, si tengo, me gustan más las hamburguesas que los hot dogs. Prefiero tener un, un hot dog. ¿Tú eres portera? Sí, pero así. Sí, así. No sé. I'd say hot, hot dogs. dogs for hands. Yeah. No, no. Hot dog era la próxima sesión. Para tirártelos, yeah. los hot dogs son fáciles. Yeah. What if it was one single hot dog? You could just use it like a baseball bat. Heureusement, on n'est pas de gage. Et la réponse, c'est quoi Il n'y a pas de réponse On va aller se coucher sans réponse. On va mal dormir. C'est <rire> grave. La nostra risposta définitive. Accendiamo. Die Fläche, wo Sand ist, ich glaube, da, also ich glaube, da auf einem Quadratmeter. Mehr als ja. ja. Granelli di sabbia. Perché sono più piccolini. Ils sont plus petits. En fait, du sable, il y en a où Bah, que dans les plages. Dans les plages. Au désert. Non, je pense que plus d'herbe. Je pense que c'est un peu de sable. Sahara. Plus de Küste, plus de Strände, plus de Sand. Genau. Als Grünflächen. Ja. Und Sandkörner sind feiner als Grashalme. Oder? Ja. Ja, Sandkörner. Io credo sabbia. Anch'io credo sabbia. La nostra risposta definitiva. Accendiamo. Do you rather play in the heat or in the cold? I don't run around a lot, See. so the heat isn't as effective, but lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Too hot. Too like yeah. cold. Yeah. Cold. Uncomfortable. Exactly. Like I would go like in my bikini and I would not move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Trop chaud. Non, moi, personnellement, trop chaud. Moi aussi, je préfère trop froid. Non, je préfère avoir trop froid. Tes doigts de pied et tout. Tes doigts de pied et tout. Tu arrives même pas à jouer. Ah, mais trop chaud, ça veut dire que tu transpires tout le temps et tout. Ouais, c'est vrai. Moi, perso, j'assure trop chaud. Moi. If you're so, so hot, like, how are you going to bring your temperature down a lot? I don't know, go inside. Air conditioning. Have some ice cream. It's hot inside. Mm -hmm. Too hot. Really? Yeah. Because if you're too the cold, sun. you can always put some clothes on no matter what. Yeah, but I just need the sun. I mean, you're talking to us. So yeah. <laughs> she needs the sun. Empieza a gritar Canelo, el nombre de Canelo, algo increíble. I remember hearing that there's a new guy from Mexico touted to be a great. The crowd is electrified. This kid loves it. You just don't fight Floyd Mayweather at that age. Why would you do that? Y pues al final de cuentas yo quiero hacer historia. Ahí está, mira el golpe, ese. Eso fue un golpe muy importante en la pelea. The two Triple G fights were two absolute wars, two epics. That jab opened up a cut on the eyebrow of Canelo. That second fight was for all the marbles. Sentía como si me pegaran con algo de 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 hierro, de metal. It's over. Dicen que para toda acción hay una reacción y esa fue mi reacción. Ça dépend quel fromage. Et moi le chaud. Moi je prends le fromage. Moi, j'aime pas trop le chocolat. Ah ouais? Je suis pas fan. On est des opposés. Yeah, I think we talk about it. Seriously, I would rather have cheese 
than chocolate. Yeah, like, like the sweet or salty. Yeah. I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I'm the more like the, like the cheese, like the yeah. chips. Like I don't really exactly. like candy or chocolate. Like I like chocolate. It's, it's good. But cheese, especially yeah. in France. Moi, je pense à, quand je pense au fromage, je pense au fromage genre qui pue. Voilà. Non, moi je pense pas au fromage. Also, oh, I told you that really good Dutch Kauda. cheese. Kauda, right? It, not that one. I mean, I haven't tried that. Oh, you it's told Gouda. me. Gouda. Yeah, Kauda. Oh, sorry. No worries. Oh. <laughs> My favorite okay. cheese of all time. Mais tu peux t'en passer du fromage. Le chocolat, le chocolat dans les gâteaux, passer. dans les trucs. Il y a toujours un peu de chocolat là. Ah, et moi, je prends le fromage. This is Marta Torrejon. And this is Irene Paredes. And this is The Big Question. Puede haber más intolerantes es verdad, estás... a la mayonesa. Es un... eh, que es intolerancia al huevo, al, a los otros productos que tenga la mayonesa. El ketchup es como más, va, tomate. O sea, que esa gente que utiliza la mayonesa utiliza el ketchup y la gente que utiliza el ketchup no utiliza la mayonesa. Yo no tomo. Yo pero... solo a veces cuando voy. Eso no me encanta. Cuando voy a. A comer una hamburguesa. Hamburguesa. Mal. <risa> Vamos. Si no, salsa rosa, la mezclamos y hago. 50-50. Patricia, yo no han dicho, podemos hacer salsa, salsa rosa y además, ella prefiere el quechua, han dicho, todo el mundo prefiere el quechua. Pero no es más que en ella. Quechu. ¿Cuál es la respuesta correcta? No, no, no. Sí. Ah. no, 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 no. <risa> A mí no se me puede hacer un cuestionario y luego no decirme la respuesta no, correcta. Neither of them. She's a vegetarian. Schnitzel. Yeah. If I never eat currywurst again, I think I'm okay. Yeah, I, uh, actually, I'm never eating currywurst. <laughs> You've never eaten it? Neither of them. I'm She's a vegetarian. A I'll take the fries from currywurst because schnitzel is also with potatoes. I think it's very from the north. It's like in Berlin and stuff, you eat a lot of currywurst. Here we are in Bayern, so we're going to go with schnitzel. And I'm yeah. from Austria, and yeah, it's schnitzel. That's true. Schnitzel. You go for schnitzel? Yep. Okay. I'll take your. Schnitzel or currywurst, and I'll have both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good! <laughs> so it works out well. Is that an agreement? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's an agreement, hey? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> like if you were to hit yourself, your answer. Ow! Answer. Weak. <laughs> <laughs> It makes me weak because I feel pain. <laughs> and I didn't score and then I feel pain. And oh. It just makes you clumsy, so clumsy is like weak. It makes you stronger? No, weaker. If I hit my shin by accident or my ankle and it hurts, yeah. does that make me stronger or weak? It's a weird question. Yeah, I was but if, stronger. Like, But if you're more resistant to pain, it's like you're strong, you know? So should I say, oh, I hit myself. Oh, but I'm so strong. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, just weak. I say weak. Fine answer. Yeah, let's go weak. You should have picked people with two different personalities. It makes you stronger in the long run yeah. than why you hit yourself. <laughs> Welcome back to the Estadio and Croy for the second half of Barcelona versus Real Madrid in El Clasico. Goalless at the break, 
and encouraging signs for Real Madrid. It's worth putting into context just what they're trying to achieve here. This is a Barcelona side that have 57 straight league wins since June 2021, when the Blaugrana lost 4-3 against Atletico Madrid. Amanda San Pedro had Atleti in front, Bruno Biamala and Azizat Oshuala had Barcelona in front. In a seesaw contest, Atleti led 3-2 thanks to a double from Emily Laurent. Marta Torrejon made it 3-all. And then Dana Castellanos, now of Manchester City, scored the winner for Atleti in the 80th minute. And that was the best part of two years ago. And it will be two perfect seasons in a row for Barcelona if they can finish off this campaign all in the green. But they've got a lot of work to do in this second half. A lot of the time this season it has been the finishes, the substitutes, the game changers, whatever you prefer to call them, who have made the difference. They might need that again, but Real Madrid are rightly dreaming of spoiling the party here against the Barcelona side, so dominant domestically. And you can tell they're on their way out from the roar, even if you had your eyes closed. A Barcelona side that since September 2019 have won 103 league matches, have lost just once that Atleti defeat I mentioned, and drawn only twice. A 0-0 draw at Atleti in January 2020, and a 1-1 draw against Rafael Vallecano. And they needed a late penalty from Jennifer Hermoso to rescue a point after Cristina Aunion had Rayo in front. That is the weight of history that Barcelona have domestically. That is what they are trying to keep going. And that is what Real Madrid are desperate to stop. Barcelona also with 58 home wins in a row in the league since February 2019. It is simply remarkable numbers, but it is a whole load of numbers that are in danger of taking a bit of a tumble, a minor blip, and having that winning streak being ended by Real Madrid. Plenty of chapters to be written in this one, and with so many world-class players on the pitch and so much attacking talent, I, for one, would be surprised if it finishes goal. It's back underway in El Clasico. Real Madrid, of course, now attacking from right to left, Los Blancos against Barcelona, kicking from left to right. And immediately, something of a hospital pass from Linda Caicedo that was short, left Ivana Andres having to fly in. Got clattered in the process, and there will be a card. Rivera Olmedo, your referee, who has the difficult job of taking charge of this one, and has booked Jace for that challenge. Chase flying in, almost got there, and instead ended up standing on the foot of Ivana Andres. Andres, who spent a long time at Valencia, almost got a testimonial there, nine years with them. And then after a spell at Levante, joined Real Madrid in 2020. It's been a regular feature in El Clasicos. Ivana Andres playing in her ninth today of the 11th and is one of the survivors from the first ever El Clasico in the women's editions back in October 2020 when goals from Patrick Guijaro, Lika Martins and Alexia Puteas as well as a Misa own goal gave Barcelona a 4-0 win. Well, back to her feet, but not looking in the best state necessarily, Ivana. But for now, out there, which will please Real Madrid fans. A key figure at the back. Maitana loses out against Weir. Now Caicedo runs into a wall of Barcelona players. Jais, who's caught late by Svava. No shortage of physicality. I don't think anyone expected there would be at any point. Could be Mapi Leon, could be Salma Pariuelo. Misa setting up fortifications for Real Madrid. Pariuelo leaves it. It's 
Mapi Leon to deliver. And at the far post, put wide by Sona Gorcevic. He didn't seem to quite know what to do with that one. It was a bit of an awkward height. Anna Maria Sona Gorcevic, who has uh, quickly endeared herself to Barcelona fans by not just learning Spanish quickly, but is now on to having Catalan lessons as well. And in a recent in-house interview with the club's media channel, who asked her a question in Spanish, she came back immediately responding in Catalan, insisting that she was asked in Catalan. And that's a pretty good way to endear yourself to Barcelona fans. The club, such a symbol and expression of Catalan culture right across the world. And of course, that is something of an off-field division when it comes to these two teams whose rivalry goes so far beyond a footballing basis, of course. Rolfa. Mapi Leon, again popping up in an advanced position. Mentioned just how key she was in an attacking sense against Roma across so many metrics. Well won back by Orof. Free kick for the foul from Patrick. Clipped ball forward from Ivana. Dealt with by Mappy Leon. Foul on Patrick. From Kenty Robles. Robles, one of four Real Madrid players in the 11 tonight. You were also in their 11 for the very first Clasico, which was two and a half years ago. Ivana Andres, Misa Rodriguez, and the other survivors. The likes of Olga Carmona, just for example, still at the club, but on the bench. The likes of Kosovo Aslani and Marta Cardona moving on to AC Milan and Atletico Madrid, respectively. Might say Orof still in the starting lineup from that day. Three survivors for Barcelona in both 11 Sandra Panos, Mapi Leon, and Aitana Bonmati. Well, it wasn't just one, but it was two players who were offside there. Caicedo was two. It'll be worth saying and reiterating in terms of the stick the referees can get that they have a thankless job so often and the game wouldn't be possible without them as Jace tries to burst through against Sparva who had to be very careful and it is a free kick right on the edge of the area Sparva was the wrong side of Jace and that was not far from being a penalty instead Barcelona have a set piece in a really dangerous area here Well, the contact clearly started outside of the box. It was certainly not a spot kick, but it was also not far off from being one. Can Barcelona grab the lead? Real Madrid with a player in the block position to allow the wall to jump. Mappy Leon so often so spectacular from situations like this. It's Mappy Leon and it was spilt by Misa. Jace was hunting the rebound. Well, Misa's frustrated that there is a hole in the wall and you can understand her point. Well, it's because Teletti moves to her right. That's what made the gap. Helped forward by Patry. Barcelona with real momentum here. Pariuelo ran into heavy traffic. Weir, who's been key in trying to get Real Madrid going on the counter attack. On their skirmishes forward. Great vision from Sorno for superb wing mirrors to find Caicedo, but Caicedo couldn't quite bring it under control. The bounce was a touch awkward. Now Aitana. Mappy Leon. Mm -hmm. 
Rolfer has five in the box. Rolfer's cross. Heads all the way through to Caicedo, who was trying to run it out for a throw in. Aitana was onto that game. On by Kathleen. Engen. Good quick feet in there. Beautifully done from Orof. And now he's being hustled back by Sono Gorcevic. His father clears. They are getting towards that time where both coaches will be looking towards their benches. Alberto Turil will be having a think about how he might want to change things. Certainly got no shortage of options. Same can be said, no doubt, for Jonathan Giraldes. Who, amongst other things, has got three players. He made it into the FIFA Pro 23-player squad of the year. Irene Paredes, Kira Walsh and Carolina Graham Hansen. Alexi Proteus, of course, out. Four represented from that squad of 23 in the starting lineup two in Panos, Mapileon, Aitana and Bronze. Sonofa. We're dropping very deep to try and get Real Madrid going. Now we're just trying to slide it in behind. Important interception from Mappy Leon. Zone of fun. His father. Caicedo. Relatively new to life at Real Madrid, but has quickly endeared herself to Madridistas by scoring that key goal against Villarreal to help them get through to the Copa del Arena semi-final. Just two good performances. Two victories from a valuable piece of silverware. So two good performances they need to see off two teams, the semi-finals. Of course, her first job to get through. Bronze just taking a knock. Was limping a touch there, which will be a slight concern for Barcelona fans. Lucy Bronze, who is not far off, ending up not even playing for England once upon a time, saying if she didn't make the England team before her 22nd birthday, she'd have been off to play for Portugal. She is of mixed heritage. And four months before that landmark, made her debut against Japan. And I imagine there's a lot of England fans very pleased that she did so. Otherwise, uh, could very much have been Lucy Bronze in a Portugal shirt. Kathleen. Svava. Got to be careful back there, Jace is a very good presser and has helped force the error. The header down from Pariuelo for Patrick. Important recovery challenge, but Engen is there to set it wide. Pariuelo. Engen. Patri was looking for Pariuelo. And instead space for Esther, who's dropped very deep just to try and get Real Madrid going. Now we're really dangerous in situations like this, but Rolfer is there to snuffle it out. Panos. Now Marta. Barcelona trying to go through the gears here. That winning run is being really tested. Of course, they were so close to a perfect season last time around. 45 wins from 47 across all competitions. Only losing in the second leg. Champions League semi-final against Wolfsburg and then in the final against Lyon. Strike from distance. Nisa was just off our line for a second. But was quickly able to backpedal and avert any sense of danger. Patrick Iharo trying a luck. What a goal that would have been. He's already got three in El Clasico. Patrick Iharo scoring in the last two Liga FA meetings between these sides. Weir 
on the turn. Didn't really connect with it cleanly. Lost her footing at the crucial moment, Caroline Weir. In such a danger when she's setting up to shoot. Great run by Caicedo, who got the better of bronze, found the space to get the cross in. Mappy Leon got the block in. Well, this angle shows what a magnificent piece of defending it is from Mappy Leon. Kira Walsh and Carolina Graham Hansen to come on. Not a bad pair of players to bring on. I say not a bad, very sarcastically indeed. Corner for Real Madrid. Flicked away by Bronx. Sent forward. And Ivana had to be so careful. Had Chase hunting her down. And you would think Chase might be heading off soon to be replaced by Zizat Oshwala. That would seem the most likely change. Oshwala, who already has 19 goals in Liga FA this season, 23 across all competitions, but has in some quarters been criticised by Barcelona fans for not finishing even with those numbers, quite as many as she could have. 23 goals, that figure I mentioned across the league and the Champions League to be specific, and that is from 26.7 expected goals. Rolfa. Rolfa's cross has too much on it. What a trio to bring on. Quite something to have that up your locker, but that is this Barcelona star-studded squad. Worth mentioning as well, Naomi Fella has come on for Real Madrid. Fella, a dangerous, creative winger, replacing Esther Gonzalez. Ingrid Engen makes way for Kira Walsh at the base of the midfield. Anna Maria Sonogorcevic goes off to be replaced by Karolina Graham Hansen down the right wing. And Azizat Oshwala comes on as well. And it is Jace. Jace makes her leave. have seen this kind of pattern so often in games Barcelona have found tough and make a double or a triple change in and around this time of things and then the substitutes come on and well people do often refer to them as finishers these days and they help them finish the game off in style but Real Madrid have got something to say about that no doubt Cross was looking for Caicedo And here come Barcelona. The crowd really getting even more involved now. They can sense that Barcelona need them. Well defended by Svava, who managed to get the throw as well. Foul on Caicedo. By Bronze. Svava hasn't got forward often today. Had a chance to put a decent ball in there. Instead, overhit it somewhat, and instead, Rolfa can send Pariuelo streaking forward. Safety first, and understandably so from Real Madrid. Matanea del Castillo warming up could be. Handy for Real Madrid to try and open the game up later on, next to her Olga Carmona. 
He scored three of Real Madrid's six El Clasico goals across ten meetings between these sides. More than holding their own today, Real Madrid, but they've got a lot of work to do still. Pariuelo. Still Pariuelo. The Barcelona fans will be very glad. Chose football over athletics. Was the second youngest athlete to appear at the European Indoor Athletics Championships not long ago. Cross in. Dealt with by Misa. Salma Pariuelo signed in the summer from Villarreal. Was at that championships in 2019 and also broke records in the 400 metres in qualifying for the Youth Olympics Festival. It's been a brilliant addition to the Barcelona side this season, sizzling down that left wing. More often coming on in games to make an impact, but has got more starts to the campaign's gone on. Aitana. Ella just trying to press on Marta. Aitana has to be careful. Gets it away to Walsh. Those two so good in tight spaces. Mappy Leon. Rolfer. Just trying to get it through for Patry. And here's Pariuelo. It's still Pariuelo. Who committed a foul in the process of racing onto that one. Samuel Pariuelo, a constant threat down that left flank. Already has 14 goals in 21 games across all competitions this season. He's got eight in Liga FA, which is remarkable when you think that this is only a seventh start to go with seven substitute appearances. Zonofa being pressed by Patrick. Eventually gets it away. Barcelona really swarming on that press. So many Blaugrana shirts so far forward. Force the error from Misa. Strike wide. Wide from Patrick. Who is capable of the spectacular and almost produced it there to open the scoring in El Clasico. A moment to forget for Misa. Nobody closed Patrick Guijarro down. And she thought, why not? Harrow, who scored in the reverse fixture between these two in November, and also scored in the home league Clasico last season when Barcelona won 5 0. Real Madrid's biggest defeat against Barcelona, or indeed any other opponent in their short history. Harrow, who also scored in the very first El Clasico back in October 2020. Have been relatively limited in terms of clear-cut chances, Barcelona. We're now going to make the fourth of their five available changes. Marta Torrejon to be replaced by Irene Paredes. Captain's armband being handed over to Sandra Panos. And a big reception for Toy Hon. A legend in these parts. Played more than 250 games across all competitions for Barcelona. Here comes Irene Paredes. He joined a couple of years ago from Paris Saint-Germain. Recently signed a new deal through to 2025. Paredes, who is part of the captaincy leadership group they have at Barcelona, a five-player team, was added to it when Buteas got injured. Oshwala, Aitana. Graham Hansen. Great defending from Caicedo, who then has to be careful against Bronze. His father clears. So Real Madrid with just one change left up their sleeve. Barcelona, I should say, I beg your pardon, with just one change left up the sleeve. Real Madrid have made only one. 
So they've got more flexibility in terms of what Tyrrell wants to do from the bench now, but they've got defending to do. As we head into the last quarter of this game, it remains goalless. Antonio Del Castillo ready to come on. Will she come on with it still nil-nil? Corner in from Mappy Leon. Nisa had to be careful, did really well backpedaling. Not easy that for a goalkeeper in a crowded box. Ball in, headed down and well gathered by Misa. Carolina Graham Hansen's head up. As clear a sight as goal of Barcelona have got throughout this contest so far. Graham Hansen completely unmarked to that far post. His father was having to worry about Oshwala. Ball down the line, looking for Svava or Fella. Paredes concedes the throw. Double change coming for Real Madrid. Matanea del Castillo and Olga Carmona both to come on. Might take off. Making way. And Linda Caicedo coming off only her second start for Real Madrid today. Having signed from Deportivo Cali, the Colombian 18 year old. He's putting an impressive shift down that flank. Be interesting to see, but I imagine. Olga Carmona, who is extremely versatile, is going to be given a little bit more attacking license within this system. It looks like she's slotted in down that left wing. Ivana. Sent clear by Misa. Patrice touch, now Weir. Good pressing from Barcelona, Patry has options arriving, couldn't quite find Oshwala, Weir was there. Well, regardless of the fact that this is a league fiction that Barcelona are 10 points clear, there's so much on the line here. Pariuelo. Aitana. Barcelona, of course, trying to keep that record-breaking run going and that perfect run in El Clasico fixtures. That is a, both massive things of pride in this region. Graham Hansen. Still Graham Hansen, funky footwork. Graham Hansen's ball in, is blocked by Zonolfa. And again, the decibel levels rise in Catalonia. Graham Hansen's reaction said it all. She knew that was a great chance. Graham Hansen only recently returning from injury. Scoring a hat-trick in her first game back after being out for four months or so. Mappy Leon to deliver. Mappy Leon's corner. And again, Misa does well with lots of bodies around her. A really good driven delivery. But the pressure very much remains on Real Madrid. Real Madrid, who only secured Champions League football in the final day last season, needed a hand from Barcelona, who did them a favour by beating Atletico Madrid 2-1. Real Madrid winning 1-0 at home against Villarreal. Pariuelo, Nisa again at the centre of things. And she get a touch. 
Aitana stepping past Olga. Aitana's crossfield ball. Dealt with at that back post by Olga. It was Kenty Robles covering after Olga had initially been beaten by Aitana Bonmati. Barcelona with all the momentum in this contest at this moment. Again, the bus stop routine set. Ball in from Parayuelo. Headed away. Aitana. Slightly heavy touch, and Olga sends it forward. Antonio Del Castillo was on the sprint, but Panos more than alert to it. What a ball that is from Bronze to find Parayuelo in space, and that's always a dangerous thing for an opposition. Here goes Parayuelo. Trying to find a little hint of a way through. Rolfa back for Walsh. Now Bronze. Oshwala. Aitana. Graham Hansen's cross, and the header straight at Misa. Another decent opening worked by Barcelona. But Patry, much like Graham Hansen not too long ago, could only direct the header straight at Misa Rodriguez. And Real Madrid lived to fight on. Misa in no rush to get things underway. Robles. Cleaned up by Walsh. Roni actually headed it into harm's way, but wins it back well. Aitana driving forward in that trademark way, but Olga got a foot in. It will be a free kick, though. Well, that just sums up why it's thankless being a referee. Olga Carmona can't believe it's a foul. Aitana Bonmati is desperate for Olga to be booked for it. Here's the evidence. Barcelona take it quickly. Graham Hansen floats one up. Oh, it's chaos in there. It's Parayuelo who goes down. Penalty given. Barcelona have a penalty in El Clasico. Atenea del Castillo goes in the book. Parayuelo brought down in the opinion of the referee. Real Madrid are furious. No video assistant referee system though in Liga FA. So a spot kick it is. Here's how it happened. Real Madrid a bit disorganized from the quickly taken free kick. It was allowed to bounce not once, but twice in there. And Ateneo del Castillo is the wrong side of Parayuelo and just has a right arm. You can see it there across the stomach of Parayuelo. That's why it's been given. Can Barcelona finally break Real Madrid's resistance? Looks like it will be Fridolino Rolfa. He has scored in El Clasico before. Scored in the reverse fixture, the fourth goal to make it 4-0. A different level of pressure here though. Rolfa to open the scoring in El Clasico. Up against Misa Rodriguez. Rolfa versus Misa. It's Rolfa! And it's Barcelona who leads! Fridolina Rolfa on target. Sent Misa the wrong way. And for all Real Madrid's resistance, they'll be worried. It's a familiar story in El Clasico here. Barcelona in front. And will fancy their chances to go on and make it 11 from 11 in this head to head. Real Madrid have got to find something now in the last quarter of an hour or so plus stoppages. A calmly taken penalty from Fridolina Rolfa, who's been one of Barcelona's best players across this season. 
and puts another big tick in our campaign. With the opening goal in this contest, a contest that means so much, of course, to everyone in these parts and in the capital. Who's a Blaugrana or a Madridista. And listen to the atmosphere now. It was pretty rocking beforehand, but there was always a sense of nerves and relief. Now Barcelona fans all off their feet. Particularly away in the far side where most vocal supporters congregate with particular drums and colour and verve. So that's played in behind for Oshwala. Frantically cleared by Ivana. Barcelona get the set piece and will be eyeing a second goal that would really help them to make this victory a lot more comfortable. Long way from done here, Real Madrid have got a lot of quality both on the pitch and on their bench. But you do sense they've got to find a way to stop Barcelona here. Graham Hansen, nodded goalwards but wide. Wide from Patry. Real Madrid have got to find a foothold. They've got to stop Barcelona scoring a second. That really would be a long, long way back. Right now, it's Barcelona who have the momentum. That's just as Fela was dreaming of streaking forward. Fronz just hurting her head in that collision. Aerial collision with Olga Carmona. Bronx. Four nil, four one, three one, five nil, and four nil. Five Liga FA Clasico results so far. As Fella gets it wide to Olga. Olga's low cross is a really good one. Comes towards Toletti to strike. Straight at Panos. A great chance for Real Madrid. Plenty of power on it from Sandy Toletti, but too close to Sandra Panos, who was excellent in midweek against Roma and was equal to that. Carolina Graham Hansen just trying to nick it past Svava. He's had a good game and has had a lot to do down that left flank. Olga loses out to Graham Hansen. He's trying to work it inside for Agtana. Now Brontis cross and it runs for Patry, who had she connected might well have made it 2 0. Actually connected cleanly to be precise, ended up swinging a left boot at it and sending it wide. Real Madrid will hope to find an equaliser and make Barcelona rue these missed chances. This was the strike at the other end from Toletti. A yard or so either side and that would have been very tough for Panos to keep out. Now on comes a real star for the future. Vicky Lopez. One of the most exciting young talents in world football. On for a, another player who you can certainly put in that category in Salma Pariuelo, who is almost scarily good for a 19-year-old. She's uh, positively old compared to Vicky Lopez, who is only 16. It's part of the next-gen goal list of players to keep an eye out on. She was the Golden Ball Award winner at the 2017, at the Under-17 Women's World Cup in October of last year. And it's already shown positive signs on the pitch for Barcelona as well. 
became the club's youngest goal scorer in the 7-0 win against Levante Las Planas in January. Clever ball in behind, a little flick header into the gloves of Panos. Real Madrid trying to find something to spoil Barcelona's party. I mentioned Lopez being 16, it also says a lot about how much Jonathan Giraldo trusts her to put her on in a situation like this, but anyone who's seen Vicky Lopez play will know why he does. Clever skills in there from Feller, who feels like she was fouled by bronze, nothing given. And then lovely from Aitana, skipping away. Real Madrid were on the high press, so there is space in behind. Patrick finds Rolfa. Vicky. Gets the return ball. Patrick. Rolfa. Linking up with Mappy Leon. Still Fridolina Rolfa. Wins the corner. Helps occupy the clock for Barcelona and helps give them a good chance of finding that second. The second time in a week, Barcelona with the lead by a goal to nil, but not finding it easy to close the game out. Second goal would calm their nerves. Graham Hansen to take it. Graham Hansen's ball in has just too much on it for anybody. And away it goes. Well, that was the penalty. Teneo del Castillo just making the mistake of grabbing with her right arm, Salma Pariuelo. Fridolina Rolfa made no mistake. Rolfa with her second goal in El Clasico. Second this season as well. Deflected. And Zornova felt like she might have won a corner there. Referee didn't see it that way. Freya Siri Olofsson, the Swedish midfielder who signed in the summer from Racing Louisville. Comes on in place of Claudia Zornova to offer some fresh legs in that midfield area. Played in the 3-1 Super Cup defeat in January. Where Real Madrid lost after extra time. Graham Hansen. Still Graham Hansen. Lovely work. Finds Oshwala. Oshwala's pullback. Ivana was there. Still not cleared though. Now just hammered away. Anywhere will do stuff for Real Madrid. Just trying to fight to stay in the contest. Against Barcelona. Oshwala. Wins the corner. Barcelona, who are the only team to make a profit, the women's team, other than the men's football team, none of the other sides across various different sports, basketball, hockey, ice hockey, rugby, athletics and volleyball, to name a few do. It does reflect the positivities of what can come from investing in a women's team over a concerted period. Graham Hansen to deliver. Edward at the far post, there's a little deflection on it. Don't didn't quite get it cleanly. Loops over the bar. Oh, 
Barcelona with plenty of history when it comes to women's football. The first women's game was at the Camp Nou in 1970, but they weren't known as FC Barcelona then. In 1988, they founded the Club Femini Barcelona as one of the members of the Liga Nacional. But were only actually officially incorporated by Barcelona as a club in 2002. Had three straight seasons in the second tier, would you believe? from 2001 to 2004, eventually made it up third time lucky in the playoffs, but relegated again in 2007, came straight back up in 2008, and of course the last 10 years have largely dominated Spanish women's football, going pro in 2015, and on now for a fourth straight Liga FA title. Real Madrid certainly showing, despite their comparatively short history, that they're improving season on season. Managed just 60 points last season. And even if they lose today, they'll be four points off last season's tally with seven games left. Aitana manages to get it away. Possibilities on the counter. Patrick Rolfer has lots of space. Might go it alone here. It's Rolfer to strike. Drifts wide. So often from positions like that, Fridolina Rolf has zinged one into the far bottom corner. Not quite this time. Great press breaking from Aitana. Patrick saw all of that gaping space out there. And Rolf are hunting what would have been her ninth goal of the season across all competitions, a sixth in the league. Barcelona fans very pleased to see her sign a new three-year contract in January. Aitana, bronze, Svava winning it, eventually foul given on we referee tried to play advantage, minimum of four minutes added on at the back end of this contest, Alberto Turil watching on nervously, Really, once upon a time, made two appearances for the men's senior side, played for the B team as well as coaching the men's youth and B teams to build his coaching CV, as well as working at the Spanish Football Association from 1998 for a long period of time. Graham Hansen. Toletti just managed to slow things down. Helped on by Walsh for Rolfer. Good persistence from Atanea, who sent just a little bit too physical for the referee's liking. Fouling the Swede. Well, if they can't find something late here, it will just be one point from their last three games for Real Madrid, that goalless draw at Atleti and then the 1-0 home loss against Granadilla Tenerife. Will also be a first away loss this season. Nine wins and a couple of draws on their travels in the league previously. Did lose at Chelsea and PSG in the Champions League group stages. Here's Aitana in space. Finds Rolfer. Rolfer's cross. Now Bronze deflects off the boot of Svava. Aitana! Just too much elevation on it from Aitana Bonmati. She's in the kind of form at the moment where you're almost surprised when she's off target. Has been scoring and assisting for fun recently. Nine goals and 10 assists in 14 games this year. It's already got plenty of fans hyping up her chances of winning some of the most coveted individual prizes in women's football, and understandably so, with numbers like that. Barcelona on the verge of yet another win to add to those 
extraordinary numbers they've been putting up since that winning streak started. Would be 183 wins now to go with six draws and 11 defeats since 2019 across all competitions. Averaging more than four goals a game across that run and conceding it, give or take half a goal a game on average. Still work to do here, still time for Real Madrid. Forward by Ivana, looking for Fela, who hasn't had much service. Has managed to keep that in, nearly won a corner off bronze. Up next for Real Madrid, Levante Las Planas in six days' time at home before an international break. Here's Graham Hansen. Still Graham Hansen, Barcelona can finish it here. Brilliant defending in the nick of time. Kenty Robles keeps Real Madrid alive in the contest. Graham Hansen. Full-time whistle can't be too far away. Graham Hansen's corner, just about kept alive by bronze. There is Misa, but that will be that. Same old story in El Clasico. 11 wins from 11 for Barcelona. Real Madrid didn't make it easy though. Fridolina Rolfa's penalty in the 76th minute, the difference between the sides after Ateneo del Castillo fouled Salma Parriuelo. Just one point from their last three games for Real Madrid. Barcelona extend their advantage at the top to 13 points. They're on for back-to-back -back perfect seasons and their record-breaking run across men's and women's professional football extends to 58 straight league wins now. And their home fortress remains intact. 59 straight home wins across more than four years of Spanish league football. So much to take from it for Real Madrid, but ultimately just edged out of the contest. A familiar story and a familiar result in El Clasico. It is Barcelona who take the points and take them further towards yet another, a fourth straight Liga FA title and potentially a second in a row where they've won every game in the league campaign. Handshakes and great to see plenty of mutual respect out there despite the rivalry that was so obvious throughout this gripping contest. Fridolina Rolfa's goal, the difference. Thank you very much for your company wherever you've been across the world for this El Clasico, where it's finished at Estadio Johan Cruyff. Barcelona won. Real Madrid, nil.